Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. My name is Zach and behind me is my 2022 Hyundai Ioniq 5 SEL all-wheel drive with the big battery. And I've had it for about four months now and what we're gonna be doing today is really exciting. We're gonna be doing an efficiency test with a roof box on top. So let's hit the road and see what we're gonna be doing. So I've had this Ioniq 5 for a while now. Uh, it's been about four months or so and what we're really trying to do with this car is it's my family road tripper we go to we go down to texas a lot so we've opted recently to install uh, our Thule uh, roof bar system as well as i got their largest box they make it's the xxl motion xt i believe uh, and it's huge and it's back at home so what we're doing right now is we're going to be running this car without the box on our efficiency uh, loop style test 70 mile per hour loop style test so what we do here is we're starting here in wellington colorado we're charging the car up right now to 80%. Once the car hits 80%, we're gonna hit the road, go all the way up to a little bit shy of Cheyenne, come back and come back here and see what our efficiency is when we get back here. Then what I will do while it's, so that will be our unloaded test without the box, just the rails. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll go home, put the box on, put some stuff in there so it has a little bit of weight to it too. Uh, then we'll come back here, charge back up to 80%, hit the, do the exact same loop style test again all the way up to Cheyenne, come back, do 70 miles per hour with the box and see what our efficiency is and compare the two uh, groups. So we'll have our control group without the box and we'll have our test group with the box and we'll see what, how much efficiency we are going to lose with this giant box. I'm excited for this because we're about to go to Texas uh, on a long road trip and this is all gonna be a part of that. So we really do need to know what the efficiency is gonna be. So let's hit, the, let's hit 80% and let's hit the road. This is the only test that I know of that has uh that we're doing a test with the ionic 5 in a roof rack i haven't seen anything on youtube about what kind of efficiency we can get i did get the most aero efficient roof rack setup that Thule offered at the time of filming this which is uh may 2022 um so i got all the bells and whistles from them uh for it uh it was very expensive this is not sponsored by the way i did pay for this out of my own pocket uh so uh, yeah, it, it was very expensive, but I'm excited because this Thule system will basically double our trunk space in this car. The box has 22 cubic feet of storage. Now we're not testing that right now, but when we get back to my house, I'll film uh, putting it on, how big it is on the inside, uh, and really kind of give you a good walk around of it. That's what I'm really excited about is because we'll have all of that extra space uh, in the car when we go to Texas and just really have a lot bit more uh, effective way to get there. So for this test, so y'all are aware, we will be running the car in eco mode. We're gonna turn our fan speed down to one, uh, temperature set at 68. We do have my son in the car, of course, too. Uh, so he's about 35 pounds. Uh, I'm about 255, so we'll, you know, so we do have about that much weight in cargo. We don't have anything else in here. I think a stroller is actually in the back. That's not very heavy. So now we're getting up to the highway and we're hitting it. So this, you know, video, we won't really be talking too much about uh, the Ionic 5's features. You know, I might mention a couple things that I like as a driver, but we're, what we're really focusing in on is our efficiency with this rack system. Uh, right now, I just have uh, just the rack installed. Put her at 70, there we go. You know, I just had the rack installed, so I haven't run this on the highway at all, actually, uh, with the rack system. So it's good to know what it's gonna get unloaded. I can tell you right now, there is a bit more wind noise, and we do have quite a bit of wind today, uh, too. So we're heading uh, north towards Cheyenne right now. Here we go, the wind is coming west, northwest at 19 miles per hour. The roof noise is a bit more noticeable uh, with just the bars installed. So I'm very curious what's gonna happen once we get the box on there and how much louder that's gonna be. So you joined me back in the Ionic 5. Just wanted to make a real quick note that we did start at 80% when we left the come and go. So I did charge up to 80%. It only took nine minutes. I think we rolled in with like, 74 percent or something like that so it wasn't really that big of a charge um but yeah we're uh getting 1.8 miles uh per kilowatt hour right now 
Um, and this will be a little bit different than our normal range test because normally what we do with like gas cars is we get back to the cup and go, we fill them back up, uh, and then we determine the miles per gallon. But on an electric car, you don't really have to do that because you got your meter rating. But we want to make these tests fair uh, for both sides. So what we're going to be doing once the box is installed or once we get done with this efficiency test, we'll stop back at the cup and go, record our miles per kilowatt hour there. Uh, and then take some pictures, obviously, for the records. And then um, we'll head back to my house. I'll install the box. We'll film that, kind of show you all what it is. And then uh, head back to the Come and Go, charge back to 80%, then hit the road again uh, to back to Cheyenne, do the range test again with the box. So let's turn around, head back to Wellington, and see what our efficiency, our final efficiency is at the Come and Go. But the reason why we do these loop style tests, just so you are aware, is because I think we were going into a headwind on the way home, on the way here, excuse me, and now we're heading back to Fort Collins. So technically, that headwind should be at our rear now, and we should have better efficiency. Okay, so, update from the road. Uh, a lot more people uh, driving. You guys see, you know, it is Memorial Day, so a lot of people are coming home. Uh, there's up to 40 mile per hour gust according to the highway signs out here. So you can see this trailer that we're passing right now. Uh, see if he's running away distribution hitch. He is. But he seems squatting pretty good. He's kind of walking all over the road. So is this guy. Hello. You can hear that wind outside. I think this was a great day to do this test because of this wind. And, you know, this is, you know, you do encounter this on road trips sometimes. So you, you know, you gotta be prepared for it and you gotta, you know, account for it. So that's where apps like a better route planner come in very handy. Um, they even have, you know, parts on a better route planner now that'll let you hook up an OBD2 tuner, OBD2 dongle to it and get uh, and get linked into the car. So let's get it back in 70 here. We're trying to hold uh, 70 and kind of go around people. We're not trying to clog up the left lane either. But yeah, I am not sure we're gonna get better efficiency on the way back. We might, it might even be worse. All right, so we're back here in Wellington, Colorado. Let's pull into the come and go and get an official uh, tally. And then what we'll do from there is head back to my house uh, and uh, put the big box on. Overall, I think the car did great, uh, and even in this windy conditions. And now it's official. So we're here back at the charger. We're not gonna charge up here. I'm just gonna go back home um, and put the box on. So let's get the official. Here we go, I'm very crooked. Yes, I know. So 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour, 52% state of charge. We started with 80% state of charge. So, and we went 50, let's get the exact. It's, so it's like 59, I started it just a little late. It's 59, I've done this test a million times. All right, so getting up here inside the Thule, uh, once again, this is 22 cubic feet of storage. It's a monster. Uh, so we all just saw me do with putting it on the car, obviously. It has these cool little uh, brackets because you don't want to over torque them and they don't let you because they have this cool, the guy at the store showed me, there it is. That cool little satisfying click and double-sided opening, which is so cool, right? Okay, so we're on the other side now, and we're clipping in. Doing the exact same thing we just did on the opposite side. And once again, I really like that it opens on both sides. This is my first cargo box ever, so pardon me if all the cargo boxes do that, but I just find it really cool. So, here we are. So, these bars, by the way, were installed by a local company here in Fort Collins called Rack Attack. I think they're a chain rack installer. I'm never taking these off because they put them on. I feel like they did a pretty good job with it. But I wanted to show y'all too, even though this is the largest box they make, the Ionic 5 is so big, it can clear the hatch. I have not adjusted the hatch to open less. That is full open. So check it out. We got a big 230 pound bags of charcoal, 
bottle of Rain-X, a medium-sized suitcase, a very large suitcase. This suitcase is very, very big, by the way. And as you can see, plenty of room for everything. I could probably definitely put more stuff in here, but this is great. All right, so you join me back here at the come and go. Uh, we are charging the car back up to 80% to do run number two, this time with our Thule uh, XXL uh, cargo box on the top. So what we're gonna do, like I said, is we're gonna charge the car up to 80% uh, just where we started without the box. I wish these were Electrify Americas and we'd be cranking right now, but we're not. We're at like 56.2 on these. Uh, charge point units i think they're only rated for 62 so whatever let's get something to eat and make sure things are good to go all right so here we go we're about to head out from wellington colorado and we are on our way to cheyenne let's make sure everything is reset on the trip odometer tires are at manufacturer spec we're good there to recap we are running the largest roof box that Thule makes on the Ionic 5 right now. And I didn't want to go trailer hitch yet. I do eventually do want to get the trailer hitch in case you're wondering. Because I I like specking stuff out. I like maxing stuff out. So that'll be really cool too. Uh, once I get the trailer hitch, we put the roof box on, load it up, load this up with people, and then maybe tow our overlanding trailer, which is like 1,500 pounds or so. Or maybe it's actually like 700 dry. But anyway. Uh, all that in another video. We'll do range test plus towing and with everything and just see how terrible the range is going to be. It is loud. I'll tell you that right now. First impressions right off the bat, very loud. Uh, but I expected that. And we're also going into crazy winds. Uh, this is not, this is like an extreme test almost. Uh, I'll update y'all whenever we get to the turnaround and see what we're doing unless something interesting happens along the way. But should be pretty uneventful. Uh, the Highway drive assist with the box working perfectly. Um, if you if you watched the other video earlier in this video, you saw that it was kind of like whack-a-mole. I don't know what it was doing. It was very weird. It was almost scary that it could be so bad, like really hugging the lane too hard and then going out of it, you know, unintentionally. And, you know, I changed lanes and then changed back lanes and then it kind of reset itself and I turned all the stuff off and reset it. But yeah, it was very interesting, kind of weird. Just wanted to tell you, after going 17 miles, we have lost 10% of our battery. We are at 70%. So we went from 80 to 70% like that um, in 17 miles. So that's pretty bad. 10% loss after only uh, 17 miles. Uh, now granted, I think we are kind of going into the wind at this point. We'll see what we offset on the way back, but it's doing pretty bad. All right, so you join me here from Cheyenne, Wyoming. A little bit shy of Cheyenne, actually. Always correct myself there. It's been very nice. It, I haven't really noticed the box, to be quite honest with you. Uh, it's been very, very compliant going down the road. This is where it was having issues last time with the drive assist. And I think it's still doing the same thing, to be quite honest with y'all. I don't know if it's just the way these lanes are. But check this out. Here we go. Let go of the wheel. Look at that. It doesn't do it. And it's all, all the stuff is locked in. You know, all the safety features are locked in. So it should be just fine. There's something with this particular stretch of road and highway drive assist too, where it, it just doesn't understand. Like I'm fighting it right now. So here we go. We're going to let go. One, two, three, one. Look at that. It just completely drifts over. And I got to catch it because I don't want to go over into that gravel. You know, as we use these cars more often, we notice things. Uh, you know, this is my personal car, of course. This is not a press loaner. Uh, you know, I've always wondered when it does the uh, scooch over. I just noticed it actually doing the, the scooch over on uh, around some of these uh, 18 wheelers or fifth wheels and travel trailers and such. So it's doing the scoot over. You can see in the camera right here. Uh, it is all the way over to this lane thinking it might see something over here, I'm not sure, um, but that's really interesting. All quirks of these new driving assistant features, none of them are perfect by any means. So always make sure that you're paying attention and looking at the road because you know stuff like that can happen unexpectedly and you're not, you're not ready for it. All right, so here we are back in Wellington at the come and go. There was a lot of factors at play today with the wind, uh, and everything like that. So we're going to do exactly what we did last time. We're going to pull all the way into the 
Charger Park. Give you my final thoughts of today. And uh, yeah, not too bad. All right, so lock it in at 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour. 57.9 miles, so a little about 58 miles, like we always say. Um, 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour, not too bad. We're at the exact same place we started, and our current state of charge of the battery is 50%. So that big 10% drop that we saw at the beginning uh, is not the case anymore. So that's, that's pretty good news here. Well, we made it back here to Wellington, Colorado uh, with our, uh, our uh, vehicles. So we did the Thule box on the top, Pretty impressed with this box, by the way. Uh, I really do like it. Uh, not sponsored at all. Uh, did great on the trip. Was relatively quiet. It wasn't, you know, it was a little loud, but not that bad. But you can see it kind of overhangs the front a bit. No big deal. But I didn't really. You don't. You don't see it at all in the car. But it's been a really great day. Uh, so 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour with the box. 2.6, I believe without the box, so really not that much of a difference, and 3.2 from a previous test um, without anything on the roof at all. So, hope you all enjoyed this out of spec reviews videos. Do come back for more videos, please like, subscribe, and also check out our out of spec overlanding channel, where you can see us go off-roading with all kinds of great cars too. We're, uh, we're building up that channel, and we're super excited about it, and also catch Kyle's uh, crazy van uh, life trip that he's doing to Alaska right now. If you haven't checked that out, that's on the over on our out of spec overlanding channel. Hope you all enjoyed this video. We'll catch you on the next one.